Despite the new wealth of evidence that the Bush administration's desire to torture suspects was driven by a desire to gin up phony links between Iraq and al-Qaeda, not by direct concerns about another terrorist attack, former Vice President Cheney is sticking to his story that it was all about terrorism. In part two of his interview with Fixed News, the Dark Lord accusing the Obama administration of not believing that the U.S. is threatened by terrorism. What the Obama people are doing, in effect, is saying, well, we don't need those tough policies that we had. Now, that says either they didn't work, uh, which we know is not the case. They did work. They kept us safe for seven years. Or that now, uh, somehow, the threat's gone away. Uh, there's no longer a threat out there. We don't have to be as tough and aggressive as the Bush administration was. I think that's a mistake. I just I think that's a misreading of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Let's turn now to former CIA officer Jack Rice, who's been with us many times before. Good evening, Jack. Good evening, Keith. If somebody has to be waterboarded 183 times in a month, or even just that lower figure from the other guy, 83 times, wouldn't a, a reasonable person, shouldn't a reasonable person conclude that as an interrogation method, waterboarding is not working? I mean, just how much pressure must these intelligence officials have been under to establish some sort of link between Iraq and al-Qaeda if they keep going back to the same non-working method 183 times. Without question. Look, we have to go back to the 2005 Department of Justice memo itself. And what they found out about Abu Zubaydah was that even after we waterboarded, even after, and I'm, I'm not going to use the euphemism, even after we tortured this guy 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 50, 70, 83 times, there was no benefit. We never received anything else. So the idea that somehow this is justified is based upon what? What? Uh, it also, no matter what Cheney is insisting about the good intelligence he thinks that, that, that they got from these high-value detainees, presumably Zubaydah, uh, the Director of National Intelligence, Mr. Blair, indicated in his memo last week, there's, there's really no way of knowing whether the same information could have been obtained, good or bad, through other means, is there? No, and that's exactly it, too. It's, it's very easy to say, if you knew what I knew, which is what we're hearing from the vice president regularly, if you knew what I knew, we kept you safe for eight years or seven years. So you know what? Just shut up. Trust us. You'll be fine. And that's what we heard. But let's contemplate what we have here. We had no connection between al-Qaeda and Iraq. We had weapons of mass destruction. We had the fear of the mushroom cloud, which we heard over and over. We had the yellow cake. How many things do we need to hear before we simply fall over and say, whatever you want, Mr. Vice President. I don't care how many war crimes we commit. It's all right. Just don't let them hurt me. Cheney's concerns now that the Obama administration is no longer being tough on terrorism. Did he lose his moral high ground on that argument? Any part of it he might have had with the uh, release of the Levin report and the revelation in it that he was more concerned with ginning up this case for war than actually going after bin Laden? I think all this does is support the fear that we had all along. Look, the, the worst part about all of this in the end is that this didn't appear to be about actually protecting America. This appeared to be about his concept, his paranoia that he had from the get-go. And in the end, this isn't going to cost him anything. The war crimes that were committed here were committed, and it's not about these people. It's about the 1.2 billion Muslims that are out there in the world right now who are watching this saying, why should I care about what America thinks? Maybe the reason I hate America is justified, and if I don't hate America, maybe I should. That's why we need to be thinking about this. This is not ancient history. This is about where we go in the future. But also in Cheney's actions, Jack, it, these look like the actions of a terrorized man. If you're a terrorist looking to see whether or not what you're doing just psychologically works, isn't Dick Cheney exhibit A for, yeah, I mean, this is how we can infiltrate the United States, make it turn on itself and sell out its own values? Absolutely it is. You know what? When we talk about the concept of whether we win or lose this war, if we change fundamentally who we are, then we have lost. And in this case, we have decided that we have no problem with torture. I mean, this concept that Karl Rove says that this is a political difference. Let me get this right. The political difference is you're either for torture, you're either for a, an international war crime, or you're not. Is that really the argument we're making now? It's incredible. It certainly would make the conventions more interesting. Jack Rice, the former officer of the CIA, <laughs> former prosecuting attorney as well, now radio host. Thanks again, Jack. Always a pleasure, Keith.